have the that off the Good morning, Meredith. Can we see if you're 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 on mute, Meredith? So just test. You guys sound good. Thanks. Oh, there you go. Good. Good. So all I can see who's missing is Mike Orlando and Mike Neal. Okay. Um, I think everybody else is here. Can you see all of us? Yep. All right. Right there. All right, well, Greg is here. All right, it's 8.02, Wednesday, July 14th. This is the meeting of the Downtown Development Association or Authority of the City of Adrian, and welcome. Uh, just a little instruction on these mics that you have in front of us. The push is what turns them on. And I guess if you have a booming voice, I can sit back about this far and they can hear us on Zoom. But if you have a soft voice, you need to move forward here. Two fists, is that what you're saying, Greg? Two fists away. Have it pointed towards you. Um, and that's for the people on Zoom because we can hear each other uh, pretty well. <laughs> Same thing, you know. <laughs> Thanks. All right. And... Uh, all right, with that, uh, Meredith, you've had roll call? We're I've good. got it, yep. Good deal. All right, the green light, can you hear me? All right, Drake said he could put it on rock concert level if we need to, but we'll hold off and go at this level for now. All right, in front of you, or maybe even on the screen over here, you can see um, you have the agenda. And just wanted to ask if there are any additions that would need to be made to this agenda. I would like to you know, make, make that now. If none, I'll entertain a motion to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. It has been. Uh, oh, there we go. Can the I first get names? And I'm sorry. Can I get names? All right. David was the who was the one who made the motion, and Mark was the one who seconded it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. All right, thank you. Also, I've given to you by email the, the minutes and you also have copies of those in front of you for our June 9th meeting. And they, oh, I should have added something to the agenda. We do need to approve the annual minutes as well. And I can give you copies of those. I just didn't put it on the agenda. So we'll start with just the regular meeting of June 9th. Um, any additions, corrections or deletions? None, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes. So moved, writer. That was Jerry. Is there support? Support, Thomas. Support, Thomas. Any further discussion? If none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, the same. Now we'll move to the annual minutes. Um, and again, any additions, corrections, or deletions? All right, I'll entertain a motion to accept the annual minutes, annual meeting minutes. So move, Ryder. There's a second, Murray. A second with Mark Murray. Kevin. All right, we have the uh, first and second. Any further discussion on the annual meeting minutes? All those in favor of accepting the minutes indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the same. All right, excellent. Thank you. 
<clears throat> now we'll move on to committee reports. And once again, I will say, wow, amazing, great first Friday. And uh, Michelle, is there any reports you'd like to give us on first Fridays and downtown events? Um, just that the August first Friday is dog days, which will probably even be even bigger than the ones we've had so far. So I would expect a, a very large crowd for August. And, and, and can I add to that? Um, I've been involved in the dog days with Michelle and the support from the businesses is astounding of what she is getting for prizes. And it's going to be really great for the, and the Humane Society has been so involved this year with us in these meetings. So this, um, it's just, I think it's going to be spectacular and they're, everybody's really excited and just trying to help the downtown businesses. They're doing a pause port this year. So like you go into a business, you get a stamp showing that you came into that business and, you know, looked around, maybe you bought something, whatever it might be. But then those, if you have a fully stamped pause port, then it goes in for a big raffle for, for a prize. And, uh, but Michelle's really been working hard on this along with that whole committee for that, the dog days, so. Awesome. And you may have seen it before the, the last first Friday, we sent out a letter um, that came from the city and, and the DDA um, just to help as business owners and, and downtown residents and like to pick up and pick up our Dara cups. And, and like, we'll talk about um, trash receptacles in, the, in a minute, but um, that letter was sent out. We continue to encourage everyone. It's, you know, when we first thought about it, it was, you know, we didn't know if there'd be a lot of cups on the ground, but I think we had a better experience this last time. Is that right, Michelle, or we still need to stay uh, conscientious? Yeah, it actually went really well this time. Um, Brett and I went around at the end of the night and there was very little trash and what there was we picked up, but we did see um, several businesses had receptacles out and I think everybody did make a really big effort because it was, it looked good, which is the goal. You know, the next morning we want people to come into town and for downtown to look nice. We don't want it to look like we had a party the night before even though we did, so. Right. <laughs> I would just like to add, I drove through um, about 7.30, 8 o'clock Saturday morning, and I seen that we had uh, city staff out there changing out the garbages too, and they were overflowing. And so, I mean, it was great business, and thanks to the city team as well for working together on this to making sure we keep our downtown good, looking good. Excellent. Great work and great work by the committee. And thank you, Michelle, for all you do for the downtown and first Fridays. All right. Late addition to the agenda yesterday or day before. I don't know when it was. I talked to you, Dave, but uh, there's something new on, on a foot. So I'll hand it over to you. Um, good morning. Um, obviously, did everybody get a copy of the proposed budget? OK, um, I do have an extra one here. For the two right. of you, if you would like to see it. No, it's, a, it's, it's different. different. Yeah, it's oh. different. I apologize. Yeah. So um, obviously a few months ago, uh, a few of us got together and talked about um, working with the Art Delicious Committee about doing um, some entertainment, obviously with their budget. And uh, due to COVID, their budget restraints uh, became pretty thin. And uh, we're looking to partner with another organization in regards to providing entertainment uh, for Art Delicious. Um, I've done a little bit of homework and um, I would like to see if the DDA and um, would like to partner with Art Delicious in providing a small fundraiser um, for Saturday, September 18th. Um, we've reached out to uh, Phoenix Theory and they do have that evening open and um, they would love to um, come down and obviously showcase uh, their talents right here in downtown Adrian. So what we are proposing or what I'm proposing is, uh, obviously we've been to Art Delicious many times here to put the stage pretty much right back where it was and uh, provide um, entertainment starting at seven until 10 o'clock at night and we would uh, pull a liquor license and be able to sell beer and obviously seltzers and what have you, um, probably no hard liquor um, uh, down there for the event. If you see on the pages, it's obviously not to scale, but the map of the area where we would be at. 
Um, but obviously it would require probably having these two beer tents and then a separate ticket sales booth. Um, I've talked to um, the Liquor Control Commission and they said there is no restrictions within the city government in regards to us um, operating a fundraiser within the Dara district. Obviously we are in a section of the city where there is no bars and or restaurants probably 20, 30 feet away from that as long as we set up our fence line appropriately. Um, they have told me that if we would put together this event um, pending approval, obviously from them, that we would have to have, you know, obviously one entrance, one extra exit for the event like the map shows. And then obviously nobody within the fenced in area would be allowed to leave with a drink. And anybody that had a Dara drink sitting outside the fence line would not be allowed to enter that, that said area. So as long as we keep the parameters within the fence line, um, the liquor control woman I spoke to at liquor control said this license would get approved. So we are in the process right now of submitting an application already just to see if we're gonna get approved and what we have to do with liquor control. So obviously, if you look at my budget, proposed budget, um, the band is $3,000, stage is $1,500. I know expenses could be up to $10,000 for this event. Um, Don Taylor and I um, did have a conversation yesterday. He is traveling up north to for family vacation. And he has obviously, and from what I hear, the Artalicious Committee is in support of this partnership and is willing to share some expenses when it comes to some of this stuff via maybe some of the tent rental, some of the garbage and other material things of that matter. I did put a thousand dollars into marketing on this, but I think with the partnerships that we have with Visit Lundaway and Our Delicious and the following that Phoenix Theory has, that minimal expenses when it comes to marketing on this would be fine. So um, obviously I just put together a few numbers here. You see 40 cases of, you know, roughly 70 cases of different beer and bottled water. And obviously I would be looking to sell sponsorship opportunities. Um, obviously the band, basically all of these sponsorship opportunities really is covering the cost of those particular expenses. Um, obviously one band sponsor, um, which would be, you know, obviously our title sponsor and then stage sponsorship, wristband sponsors, and obviously drink tickets. So I would like to do this an event where we would only have one place would be handling cash. And that would be obviously in the ticket booth area. So there's not a lot of opportunity for theft. Um, I've worked a lot obviously with Blues and Brews group where we've usually partnership with a bank to handle the ticket sales aspect of these things. And so that way cash would be safe and secure. So obviously I have a lot of relationships with Adrian College and there's, you know, their fraternities and sororities where I can get plenty of volunteers to manage um, the beer sales as, you know, the bartending aspect of things. Um, but obviously if you look at our estimated revenue from drinks and expenses, it's not a very, very big profit line but I think this is something would add a great new addition to our community and would really help with the fundraising aspect of the money in, money out for our DDA and the Main Street program. This is something that we can put in the books for them to show money in, money out. Excellent. Uh, does anybody have any questions? So they have some of these line items like uh, materials and uh, obviously marketing and so on and so forth. You'd see these as kind of our, the upper end of our potential expenditure on these and it could very well be lower. Once it could, yes. Yes. Okay. That estimate is a guesstimate. Okay. <laughs> I should also disclose uh, Phoenix Theory is a, uh, a former client of mine and uh, I would consider a couple of their members as friends as well. So I figured I should state that. Um, 
with regards to the band booking amount, uh, an additional piece of information which might be useful to know is that they do bring their own PA system generally, mm -hmm. and it is a very good one. They have invested many tens of thousands of dollars into that. So uh, to rent an equivalent PA system would not be cheap. So that is a decent value that's included in that round. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just have a couple clarifying questions. I think it's a fun idea. So it doesn't cost anything to get inside the tent is what I'm seeing, no ticket sale? No. Okay, and then um, uh, is it, it, do we want to be seeking out these higher level sponsorships while we're out also fundraising from some of our key donors? I don't know how we go about that. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to have that online fundraising, you know, text, XYZ to this number to keep this event free so that people who walk in, buy their drink, can support the event at $1, $5, $20 via social media or um, online platform giving. So that idea of many, many, many low level donors versus you know what we're doing with our high level donors. I think it would be at least worth a conversation about that. Mm -hmm. And you probably can bring in more money than you would expect by 500 people if that's the anticipated it looks like. Yeah, um, that was kind of my estimate. And I think honestly, um, my beer numbers are probably low, but this is just what I had um, these guys put together, but I think we can actually sell more. And can you um, partner with somebody who has a liquor license and place and relationship with distributors so you're not paying retail pricing when you purchase yes. those things. Yeah. So yeah, we've um, I have obviously a great relationship with the guys from Budweiser. Yeah. And um, Mike has given me, you know, yeah, act, you know, distribution cost. Right. And so, and that's what those numbers are at. Yeah. So, so I just really would, I think, push the idea of having people who participate support in some way, even a giant locked Lucite bin drop, you know, keep this event free, put your $5, put your $10. I really think people would support that idea okay. and the idea mm -hmm. that we want to have these kind of events happening in the downtown. As we're selling sponsorships for this, would it be advisable to come up with some sort of a, a bundle that included maybe some drink tickets or some sort of an add-on so that way maybe you could get a corporate sponsor it's something they could use as a perk for a few employees to send downtown yeah obviously we did that with blues and brews mm -hmm. obviously if you were one of our major sponsors you got free vip tickets and stuff like that but obviously if we are say we sell a title sponsor say to culver's and we're the band sponsor and then we get 10 drink tickets or 20 drink tickets and does that take away from our sales you know so that is the give and take when it comes to trying to add value to that um with a couple of people i've spoken to in regards to this obviously they want to know what else do they get besides stage sponsorship or ticket sponsorship you know it's like obviously we would let them have additional banners you know on the fence line and then obviously during the band breaks we can do mentions and things of that nature and obviously we would work with phoenix theory as well making sure that they are you know thanking our band sponsors our stage sponsors alike you know so we can have those conversations with them when doing blues and brews for the last eight years the bands have always been very accommodating when it comes to those kind of things you know say hey just can you mention Culver's twice, you know, in this opening, you know, and those kind of things, for example. It sounds like you might already know somebody from Culver's who'd be interested in sponsoring this. <laughs> Maybe, I, I might know a guy. <laughs> Dave, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, Blues and Brews, always a wonderful event. It, it's a pay to play event. Mm -hmm. um, at a couple of those Artalicious events, we had um, entertainment at the Armory, there's no charge. Um, we struggled with, um, the people that would come in. So there could be, uh, all, all sorts of people for free, um, that are a different clientele than mm -hmm. would, you know, 
come in for uh, a pay to play. Yeah. And so I just, you know, our experience was we were chasing kids around and there were some folks, you know, who wouldn't have paid $5. And so my question is, is it not worth us charging $5 at the door, um, which is a nominal amount, won't keep anybody necessarily out, although mm. it might keep a better uh, control on the folks that are in there as opposed to having anybody and everybody you could just walk through the door to go in. I, I'm just putting that out there. No, no. Um, what we could do is say we can still serve cocktails during the afternoon, during the, you know, during our delicious, you know, say the event starts at noon, we open at noon, we can still have some background noise, you know, playing and then just serve, you know, beer during the day and then have it open to people want to come in sit down maybe eat or just sit there and relax and then say when phoenix theory starts at seven we can close it at six and put somebody at the door and 21 and over only no children and then that way it cuts out that piece you know of that and that way we don't and obviously i think you know i think we should hire security I mean, I think that would be an important piece, especially with Phoenix Theory. They draw a great crowd. You know, it'd be nice to have, you know, one person sitting at the door and just maybe one more just walking the crowd, yeah. you know. And, um, you know, the city has always been very, very kind and they've always sent, you know, police personnel for blues and brews. And I'm not asking the city to help. I mean, I am okay with, us hiring some sort of security to making sure that this, you know, we keep it clean, you know, so. I think the point about a nominal fee to get in, even if the fee to get in comes with drink tickets or a drink ticket, just because you want people coming in who will continue to purchase. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, the only way this really works. Yeah. Um, you just, in, you, you discourage the people they can stand outside the fence and hear just as well as they can inside the fence. Yeah. But you just encourage that the people who are inside are going to be buying clients, which yeah. is yeah. the only way the math really works. If I, if, you know, my teetotaling mom and seven of her friends come in, you don't really want them. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I love mom, yeah. but you know, that's not how the formula works. So I think you might consider, e even if it's, five bucks to get in and it comes with two drink tickets which actually cost five bucks each so it's a deal to come in okay. something like that it's like a happy hour buy one get one free yeah something just again i think it's about making sure that the people who come in are really the group that you want inside the fence okay so they or we can purchase a wristband to go in yeah mm -hmm. right yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. you know because i mean i'm i'm pretty sure i got a, a wristband sponsor already so um, we can have them purchase a wristband at, at five bucks yeah. and you get a, a free drink. Yeah. And in that way where there's, there's your entrance. Yeah. And then nobody, and like I said, we'll still have security at the door, making sure that you have a wristband to get in and, you know, nobody with a wristband, you know, and that way you don't have to worry about somebody at the door worrying about IDs, we'll have it at the ticket booth. So they come in, yeah. purchase their wristbands and their tickets, and then they can go into the event. And obviously there is gonna be those people that are gonna stand outside because the music will be yeah. loud enough where they can stand outside the fence line and Does still participate. Does actually hurt you in that respect? I mean, I can get my drink at, you know, my crazy cocktail at Mammoth and walk down there and not pay to get in. Not you sure can. Anything. And I, so, and I encourage that as well, because sure. I want to be able to support all the other downtown restaurants and bars, you know, and that's why I think with the placement of this for now is a good spot yeah. because, you know, it doesn't really jeopardize, you know, it doesn't interfere. I'm not favoring any one restaurant and or bar right. in regards to this. I'm trying to keep that in a sense, neutral. And Dave, I like your wristband idea too, because then that, allows this to still be profitable, even if they go and get their cocktail from someplace, someplace else and wander down. Mm -hmm. so. And we can market it that way, you know, $5 wristbands, and then you can go in. Because like I said, nobody's going to bat an eye about paying five bucks. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I did have the question about non-cash payment. If we can set up a system so somebody can use a card. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll set up Square, a Square reader. Dave, I think I'm the oldest guy in the room. So representing the the geezer crowd, um, a couple of porta potties <laughs> wouldn't be a bad idea out there somewhere around if the beer is flowing. We could even charge five bucks a pop to get in there. If you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, part of the contract with Phoenix Theory is they do need a area where they can rest and take breaks. And uh, working with Justin and Visit Lunaway, he has offered their office space. So when those guys need to take a break between sets, obviously a cooler, a bottled water, and some parking passes, but figure the way with the layout of the stage um those guys will be able to park right behind the stage and do their their setting up from that area and things as well so. move to approve there's there's a motion to approve this endeavor support support, lolly. support from lolly so that was murray lolly okay i do like to add um that to um reserve these guys right now it's a 500 dollars 500 bucks and to send that payment out. And I need to send that out immediately to reserve that date. Would you like to amend the motion? Just to add the $500 uh, expenditure? Um, Dave, how much do you want in the budget from, from the DDA? That's a good question. Um, right now, it's my expenses are laid out at $10,000. So the motion would be to approve this project at a $10,000 budget? Yes. Okay. And then we would still obviously have to work out the sponsorship side of things so we're not interfering with some of our big donors and make mention of that so you know just communicate jerry and i have divided and conquered now so we're headed yeah if you just communicate with us that'd be great okay and okay like i said i'll talk to you about my little hit list already that i have in mind in regards to sponsorship opportunities excellent can I confirm that motion uh, by Murray and Lolly was to approve this partner this fundraiser partnership with a budget of ten thousand dollars from the DDA? Correct. Okay. Thank you. And and Drake, you agreed Correct. with that updated this? All right. Is there and and by the way, I was going to make mention that Phoenix Theory has some following, don't they? So I suspect that would bring some people into that area as well. Yes, they they do promote widely on Facebook. They will occasionally do a live video of a couple of songs from one of their locations, which brings more people in who see that and say, hey, we'll be here for another two hours or whatever that happens to be. So they do promote reasonably well. From what I've seen. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion or questions? All right, Dave, thanks for all your hard work again. Appreciate it. And all those in favor of this uh, indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. All right, let the record show it's been a unanimous vote. We'll continue to work hard on it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do have one more quick thing to add in regards to um, Dara Cups at this time um, with talking to a few of the restaurants and bars over the last week or two, um, they have made mentions of maybe having eight ounce cups, a smaller cups for some of their mixers, you know, um, Jerry over at Farber's, they have smaller drinks and obviously Mammoth, you know, for some of them smaller cocktails, when you pour it in one of those 16 ounce cups, it looks a little short, you know, in perception when you pay, or even Chalner's, when you pay $12 for a drink, you know, and you get it in a half a glass. And so um, obviously with the approval that I had already from the last meeting in regards to expenditure for cups, I'm just suggesting that maybe we go to when I purchase cups again, we do like 15 of the 16 ounce cups and maybe 10 cases of the eight ounce cups. Okay. And all the establishments are paying for these at this point. Right? Yes, and all, and all the establishments are paying for these. It's just a wash for us. Anybody have an objection to that? Excellent, thank you, David. Okay. All right, finance committee report, Brad. Uh, yeah, um, how about we'll start with the uh, uh, revenue expenditure report, which is the two pager. Um, this is our, this is basically our, our fiscal year to date, uh, our fiscal year end um, report. And really the second page is what I wanted to bring attention to. Um, I highlighted a few boxes um, 
the, the most important one is the is the bottom one, uh, which has a number of uh, a green boxes says 47,688. That was our surplus for um, last fiscal year. Um, and so, um, as you can see, we're uh, financially healthy right now. Um, I had been doing projections in the 40 to 44,000 range, and that came in slightly above that. Um, I think there were a couple um, expenditures that we did approve in that fiscal year that obviously haven't come out of yeah, that. Right. Um, but uh, as you can see, we, we definitely had a cushion there. Um, I did notice one thing, which uh, on the first page, about three quarters of the way down, we do have a um, outdoor sculpture line item ended up going far past $5,000. It ended up at $8,190 for the fiscal year. So I may have to dig into that. I just, I got this report last night at six, six o'clock. So um, I'll, uh, I'll dig into that and figure out what, you know, why I ended up being more than $5,000. Um, but uh, we did, it did, does appear as though um, we raised 4,775 from, from that sculpture um, donations there. So we basically had the 5,000 covered. Um, just gotta figure out why it was 8,100. <laughs> um, the second page is our balance sheet, uh, which is the one the one page uh, sheet here. Um, and uh, so we have we have two accounts, right? We have this um, uh, the TIF fund and our in our regular regular fund. And if you add the two green boxes together, that's our current um, amount of money that we have in the bank. And so you can see that we are sitting at approximately two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars pending some of those expenditures, those small expenditures that were part of last fiscal year. Um, so, you know, we have a little bit of money right now uh, and we've been very conservative in what we've been spending on in the last several years. So we're in a very good position for Main Street director hires. We're in a good position to do some projects. Excellent. So Kevin, do you, you how much was raised for the arts? And by the way, thank you for all your hard work on that. It's fantastic. Sure. Uh, last I had checked, uh, it was just over 5,000, so. So there was five and five, weren't there? Five yeah, five. well, there was the 5,000 uh, that the city, I believe, does uh, out of the, uh, was the oil fund or, or, or something like that, and then the 5,000 raised. raised. Excellent. So, so there's, this must be a journal entry or something that needs to be done. But again, thank you, Kevin. That was good, great outcome. And uh, how was the how was the unveiling? Oh, it was wonderful. Well, it went well. Yep, excellent. Yep, went very well. We all did a little posing and uh, ribbon cutting. And, <laughs> Kevin and yeah. I figured out how to use the scissors together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. I, I didn't have it on the agenda. I forgot to, but I wanted to bring that up and say thank you. Oh, went very well. All right. Any questions for Brad on the financial report? Brad, thank you. All right, I'm gonna entertain a motion to accept the financial report as presented. So move, writer. All right. Support, aye. Support by Kevin, aye. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. Again, Brad, thank you. All right, I'm gonna hand it over to Mark Murray for a little discussion on what we're up, maybe up to uh, for the, what was the, Team Christopher project and just where we're at? Sure, sure. So um, I think uh, the large picture is, is that between the city's uh, community economic development director and the executive director of the DDA into the future, being able to inventory and stay on top of what properties are available uh, for development and uh, in the context of a plan that we might have to try to attract certain types of businesses into the downtown area. Uh, it really behooves the DDA to be aware of what's happening and to keep have access to some inventory and then particularly to partner with the city um, on that, that we say, here are some properties we have and here's how we're trying to develop those properties. So we bring in the Adrian Tecumseh Chamber, the DDA, the city, and then we're working all on the same page along with Lenaway now to try to attract the type of businesses that we want to have here. And that uh, I know in the Main Street program is an important aspect of how we need to move ahead. So with that, um, 
it, it came to all of our attention with the Howard Hanna sign on the Gene Christopher lot that that property is right within the DDA and in the city and we need to we ought to be able to uh, investigate that and to see what some options might be for that. So with that, we've had a meeting uh, with the land bank um, and uh, in ta talking to Martin Marshall, they're, um, they're willing to work with the city and or the DDA on some use of that property. Uh, one thing that they're concerned about is because they had to foot the bill for the removal of the, of the buildings there is a tax capture uh, incentive for them to keep ownership of the property until such a time as it may be redeveloped, at which point they can, they can reclaim some of the funds that they expended to take the building down. So with that, they um, would be um, uh, open to some kind of a lease arrangement or what have you. Um, of course, I'm, you know, we can't speak in advance of making a proposal to that. Right. But they sounded that they're willing and open to hear from us and to work with us on some uh, arrangement where there may be a, we control the property for, you know, until it gets redeveloped, at what point then we'd have to work out how that would be with them. So I, what I would hope for from here, um, that we have a committee on the DDA to talk about that. Uh, and we've, we've had a couple shots at a meeting, but I think more importantly is to may perhaps have a motion for the DDA to have a committee involving some city um, uh, staff or um, the mayor or someone that we can start to say, is there a reasonable partnership that we could have for the next five or 10 years on utilization of a piece of property in the downtown that wouldn't have a building on it necessarily, but would would it be to our advantage to utilize that for our delicious or some eventual development? Um, so I think, you know, we're wide open at this point. We don't want to see something else happen to the property that when we look back at it, we went, why didn't we act on that instead of somebody else who got a deal with something that we didn't want to necessarily see happen? So. With that, I'd like to get some feedback from the group and see what your thoughts are. I mean, I would say really, Mark, I wouldn't, uh, I think you have the committee. I think the DDA has already said your committee can work with whoever you need to. So unless you want that more formalized or you want, I mean, you're. Well, so, um... I guess it would be nice is, is, is do we all have some kind of a vision of, uh, or a priority of wanting to have some control of that property, even if we didn't uh, have a, a direct use for it? Otherwise, is it in our advantage to say, we really don't know what to do with it right away, but if we have control of it over the next three or five years, there'd be a good chance of us figuring out how to do that in partnership with the city. I think what we're, if I go back to some of the meetings we had, um, one of the things that I think is a prerequisite from the land bank is that we do have some sort of plan. And so Mark and I yeah. and Brad and, and Dave are sitting down to draw out some plans that we could probably present to this group at our next meeting um, of some visions that we might have for that type of property, um, which it could be very versatile and flexible. It could change from the season to season or however we want to change it to make it more of a public place, public space kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if there's no resistance, I guess, I have set up a committee, as you can see on there, is Land Acquisition Committee. Margaret Noe and I and Mark have been doing that. And hopefully with this, maybe Angie, you could participate if, mm -hmm. if you'd like to. Um, and work, we just want to work closely with the city so they know what we're up to on that. Um, but yeah, if there's no resistance, we'll keep moving forward as a committee. Mark, I would, thank you. I would want to encourage you to look at other properties in addition to that. I mean, the telegram site seems, you know, I mean, it, it's big, but a prime piece of real estate that could sit vacant for a very long time and really be a problem for the downtown, I think. Uh, well, I want you to know that the, the, this committee is gonna accept responsibility to look at every single thing and, and we, we're trying, trying to begin the process of doing that. And so you're right on that that needs to happen 
not only that property, but any other property that would fit in. So right. we are trying to start doing something that we haven't done in the past. And so it, it'll take us a while to get this kind of ramped up in partnership with the city to be sure that we're working together closely with the city on every aspect of this. So this is, it involves a number of people coming together and, and trying to be sure that it, it does move ahead. That These kind of projects can't work if we don't have community leadership, city leadership, business leadership. There, we have some significant projects that need to happen in the city of Adrian. And we really, really, really need to figure out how to work together and stretch ourselves to get some of these things to happen. Or as you say, Jerry, that kind of a property is gonna be there decades from now, and we'll, we'll be shaking our heads about that. So th this, this is a real challenge for us as a community and a real opportunity for us. And I'm, I, I think the DDA can step up to that. I believe <coughs> city staff and administration and leadership can step up to that. But it, it won't happen unless we're we're moving ahead. We, the, the blight committee that's been coming together has, uh, you know, we've come up with some ideas on that. But we we really have a lot of work to do, and, and I'm excited about us taking on some of these challenges. Greg, can you can you answer to this on? Because um, I attend all the planning commission meetings, and there is a master plan that you know has been being discussed, and there was a work session there night, and I know even in properties like the Telegram property that that area has been discussed as well, but how, how does that affect and play into this? Well, so the master plan envisions, uh, uh, I mean, just back up, the, uh, the master plan lays the policy level vision for land uses amongst other things, uh, including in the downtown. And uh, you know, we, we recognize the, the telegram properties and in fact, that whole area along Winter Street there on the west side of Winter Street is in flux and so have designated that in a flexible use sort of designation that would provide for a wide range of opportunities there. Uh, by the way, as you're looking at properties, don't forget about 116, 118 South Main, which are available for purchase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent. Did that answer the question? Maybe? Yeah, Greg, also, I just let, you know, I'm just going back to my commission days, though. If we ever get into the details, we can, we can go into closed session to discuss these things. Is that correct? Uh, if you are negotiating about purchase of property, as I recall. Yeah, because that'll be important if, my if we ever get that close. making a, a suspicious face that they found are, do we are we the, we're the same as a public body when it comes to oh, yeah, land yeah, acquisition yeah, yeah. yes yeah you're yeah. governed by the same Game rules in, in the open meetings act thank you okay all right mark thank you for your diligence on that and we'll continue to work in that area any other questions for mark or not all right jerry beautiful flowers yeah, it's amazing. The rain has like some of them are like <laughs> holy smokes, the land uh, rainforest downtown. <laughs> um, so we will be setting a date for the first week in August to do some trimming and cleaning up of those. Um, the flower pots, they some of them I'm going to try maybe hit uh, myself the next day or two. Um, so look for that. We could use some help when we do that. Um, and some conversation about the holiday decorations. The Adrian for the season's budget with the city is essentially spent. So additions to that um, may need to come. If we wanna expand what we're doing for the holidays, we'll probably need to come to this group. Um, but we may keep things relatively the same and work towards having a Main Street's director in place to help us with the full vision of the look and de decor of the downtown. Um, is anyone aware if the trees in the park are happening again the holiday season is a question? You mean in Comstock? Correct. Yes. And with back to like formal tree lighting event taking place? Yes, that's the, that's the hope as long as nothing funny happens like another pandemic. Right. <laughs> yes, no, that is, that is the goal for sure. Okay, mm -hmm. great, that's helpful to know, thank you. Um, so that's kind of just the update on decorating. Any questions about that specifically? And I'll talk about parklets. No, thank you for your work on that. Appreciate yeah. it. Um, 
And then parklets have been a bit delayed, unfortunately, just the timing, you know, the, my tech director being totally free and able to build those ran into by the time designs were completed and everybody was on board, he was building sets for Croswell shows. Um, but he is starting in earnest. I just have some questions about where he's planning to build those in very small sections so that they can come be put in place and taken out very easily and not need a giant forklift or something to move them each season. Um, so as sections are finished, I'm hoping to um, talk to the city about the warehouse or what I call the warehouse, um, where he might store them while he's in process because those are that work is starting. Excellent. All right, thank you. Any questions on that? Thank you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Emily, website, social media. Yes, so um, I sent out uh, in the, I replied all to that email and I sent out some of the reporting analytics. So just a brief synopsis of those. Um, we had 4,456 Instagram impressions in the last 30 days, which is pretty good. Can you, I'm sorry, Emily, I just had a question about that. Is that a DDA uh, or is that visit? Lent away. No, this is the DDA Instagram Great. page. Thank yep. Um, we are reaching about 310 accounts per post right now. And we currently have 634 followers, which is up 8.3% as opposed to where we are today in June. Um, on Facebook, we have 21 new Facebook page likes. We have 57 new check-ins and 1,043 engagements. Um, total likes, we have 2,751. Um, so for this, these last 30 days, we've had 1,000 engagements, 18 link clicks um, to the website, and we're reaching about 798 people. Um, next, were there any questions about the social media analytics? So. Okay. Um, so next, I just have a brief update on the consumer behavior study um, that we're partnering with Adrian College and Visit Lenaway is also part of that. So I get to represent both. Um, I'm pursuing that with Dr. Christy Winkles, an associate professor and department chair of the communication of arts and sciences there. Um, so we're partnering on the project to get some preliminary consumer behavior studies for the downtown area region. She runs, um, they call it PR Rush Creative. It's a pro bono PR agency run by Adrian College Public Relations students. They're conducting a college age consumer behavior study during the 2021-2022 academic year. Um, the focus of the study will be finding out where students shop and what age groups need to come downtown to eat and attend entertainment events in Adrian with, a, again, a specific focus in the downtown Adrian area. Um, we're seeing initial questions and ideas right now from downtown businesses in a brief uh, summary or a survey was sent out to those businesses. Um, and we're gonna follow up with them for uh, additional information from them per our timeline that we've kind of sketched out on details of what they've tried so far for marketing to the college age demographic um, that survey asked businesses about contact information, business hours, types of merchandise or service, um, specific hurdles they've met marketing to this demographic in the past, and any additional comments or areas of interest that they would be interested in gaining more research about. Um, the students get back on August 27th, and so work will begin shortly after that. Um, the timeline for this project is as follows. So in September, there'll be a follow-up with those downtown businesses, and we'll design a focus group and questions to recruit the, for the focus group. In October and November, that focus group will meet. In December through January, we will transcribe the focus group data and share with downtown businesses and with the DDA. In February and March, we will design a survey based on issues and questions that arise from the focus group research and the survey will be promoted on social media platforms in April and May to hopefully be sent through campus email, both at AC and at SHU to increase response rates from students. And then in April and May, we'll push the survey online 
and on campus to get a decent response and scope of the survey will be larger than the focus group, um, the initial focus group, and it will include anyone in the area 18 to 23. Are there any questions about that? This is like all the information I have so far, so I don't know how much I'll be able to answer, but are there any questions Emily, that I could take back to her? Who drank uh, less than their full two pots of coffee yet, would you mind sending that via email so we can reference back at that survey timeline? Sure, we can do that. Awesome, thank you. Emily, the uh, Town and Gown Committee uh, would love to partner in any way um, on that we we meet quarterly and involve folks from the school and the community so i i got some information on that from adrian college and i think it'd be great to, if you could plan on either attending or sharing that with the town and gown committee i think they'll be great partners on that process great i'll make note to you an email thank you yep. mm -hmm. any more questions for emily Emily, thanks for your work i think half of us don't know what you said but that's all right <laughs> 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 we get into that high text. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, all right. Now we go to the organization committee. Um, so the, the mayor, I, and Drake, and uh, who else was there? Just it's just us at that point. So we interviewed uh, Devonie Rosebrock, who is a, um, a great applicant. She's a Buzz Cafe owner. Um, and we also have interviewed uh, Jeffrey Rising. Um, who put in a late application right at the last moment there. And so we did a quick interview with him. Excited that he wants to be, he's interested. Um, and Devaney uh, came to the table first. We had a great conversation with her. We had a great interview. I think we all enjoyed her energy and she has a lot of background in event planning. Um, she was also with the Croswell for quite some time as well. Um, so she knows, the, she knows the beat. And so I think that if I'm not mistaken, the mayor's going to recommend Devaney to begin with. And uh, and that'll go to the city commission for approval. So um, the process we've been going through is our committee goes out interviews, we give our recommendation to this group and this group makes a motion to accept that as a recommendation to the commission. So. And Dave, you'll, you'll enjoy, she really likes fundraising. Like she kept talking about it and we're like, who likes fundraising? But she really <laughs> likes it. I'm like, good. Uh, so you got, you've got a partner there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> motion to approve, Devaney. There's a motion to approve Devaney, Rosebrock. Is there support, support for Ryder? Is there any further discussion? Awesome. If none, uh, entertain, I'm sorry, uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. All right, team keeps you, getting I'm stronger. I made that motion. Was that Mark? Mark? Mark Murray. And Ryder support. Yep. Got that. Mm -hmm. so. Great addition to the team. Very excited. Love to see this group just continue to, to get stronger and stronger. So I think she's going to be a great addition. All right. Fundraising committee. Uh, this is what I'll sort of run with here. Um, Jerry and I have met and we've sat down and looked at our big stakeholders in this area. And we're going to meet. We, we divided them up and we're going to meet with them individually between now and sort of the end of the month to get some pledges at the bare minimum. We're coming up on the deadline for, um, for Main Street on the application itself. And so I'm just gonna go into that. Um, so I pulled out the application from 2018 um, and I highlighted it and spent time and hours at home looking at every single answer. And uh, it, it, it does need rewritten um, in detail. I've already begun the process. I've already begun the process of inserting all our names. Um, there's population things they need, they need um, businesses, they need all kinds of inventory for this application. And Michelle's been helping me out. We've had a discussion about that. Um, and so I'm breaking it down. Now, my anniversary is July 28th and I'm taking Lisa to Traverse City. So this has to be done by then because it's <laughs> July 31st. So I'm diligently going after it, but I'm pleading for help today for those. And I'll send out a copy of what I see with all the highlights on it. And, it, and, and it, I think some of wordsmithing needs to be done as well. There's the history of Adrian, which I went back and said, is that the right way to read that? Um, and I think there's some certain things in there that I saw that like, does the DDA have a formal plan? Answer was no. And which I couldn't believe was on there. And does it have goals? And the answer is they have no goals at this time. And that was 2018. I, I guess I should have read the application before I went in and presented at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is looking back, I'm like, wow. Anyway, so, so there is some 
business inventory that we have. I was thinking about talking to Brenda Rigdon because she keeps track of every little detail when it comes to build, uh, that uh, building inventory that we have. But I'm gonna send out an email after this with this application. If any help you can give me in various sections of it, it'd be great, I need a little team effort. We're coming down to the finale here and that application needs to be in. It goes in a three ring binder with dividers and everything. Um, the one on the line is somewhat arduous to try to work with because you're trying to type in these little boxes that disappear and I can't see it. So I'd rather do it old school and do it the way they, they ask with a three ring binder. So, they, you know, here we are at uh, July 14th and we got about, you know, 10 days. I, I love editing. So I'll okay. send anything my way. All right. And a lot of it is just answers um, <laughs> and questions, but we have a strategic plan that we've done. We can present to them. Remember our map that we have that's interactive. We have so much more than, than 2018 to yeah. present. So if you see those questions, say, hey, remember we have this and we have that insert here kind of thing. There'll be a lot of appendix kind of stuff where you look in the back and see all that. Um, but it is about that thick. So just to give you an idea. So thank you. And I will send that all out to each of you. All right, I went ahead of things. So as we're out doing support, the question and getting fundraising, the question came, as to how can we be a little bit more nimble as it relates to um, taking in donations, accepting you know, uh, electronic contributions or whatever the case may be. Um, we've talked about it on our website and how we're gonna make that work. Brad, you've done some things for us from a, or start talking about Shopify and some of those things to make it easier for us. But I had a conversation with three entities. One of them's in the room right in front of me, but the other one, uh, there are two, um, are very, we're interested in helping us. Um, one is the Linaway Community Foundation, and the other one's the Linaway uh, Destination Foundation, which is housed through Visit Linaway. I think, I don't know if anybody has seen this. I don't know if I had copies for everybody, but let's pass this around just a moment. This is an agreement uh, Linaway Destination Foundation uh, provided for us. And um, there's a setup fee in here of $200 and then it's $25 a month to manage and administer the program. So, you know, Visit Linaway has been a great partner and Justin continues to try to come up with ideas to help and be a great partner with us. This is a way in which we could accept things and it does have its administrative costs associated with it. Um, but it is really more of um, who can act as our fiduciary, who can take in money, who can issue checks, who can do it on an um, easier basis. In tax law, you in the 501c3, you get a, your best deduction as a, as a donor if you give it to a 501c3 organization. I do want to clarify something. I'm not a tax advisor, but I do a lot of work in the tax area. And a public entity is also uh, recognized as, a, as a, a, a donation that can be deducted, a public entity. And I know this from different um, I read, read it again just to make sure, but I know this that when we do partnerships with Kiwanis in the city, you know, we have an obligation to our foundation that it has to be a, a, a qualified organization. And lots of times we get stuck on that 501c3, but just remember that you can give to your local city government as long as it's done for public purpose mm -hmm. and they use it for public purpose and then it is a qualified deduction. So I think we get caught between that. Um, and so yeah. the, the community foundation. Um, they exist to create endowments, in my opinion, and I think Joe would agree, but they also exist to try to have huge impact in our community. They also have about two, two and a half percent administrative fees you'll see from there. But they're, they're, uh, they said they would take it if we would do something like this. If, if you're gonna get a donation at 10% or 20% needs to go to an endowment for the long-term benefit of the, uh, of the organization. Because that's why they want to see this perpetuity type thing take place as well. Greg, you just got me a late email regarding that. Could you speak to what the city can do now? Yeah, Nathan uh, Owen has spoken with uh, Point and Pay, which is our online payment portal. And uh, they are able to take donations. Uh, they would waive the setup fee uh, for us, or they've indicated we don't have that in writing yet. There is a... Um, you know, credit card usage charge that, that would be imposed, which would, we'd have to pass through to the DDA's budget. But um, basically he can set that up online for you uh, uh, as long as you can get BSNA to get back to him about it, uh, which he said, <laughs> I showed you the email chain, but he's had a little bit of difficulty with that, but it, it is available. It is available. Now, a lot of the things that we, we concern ourselves with um, in our last discussions 
is our ability to write checks when Dave needs to act on something immediately. You know, I know the city runs through two sets of vouchers per month, is that correct, to get approval before they issue checks. Um, is there a way to become more nimble with the city when it comes to that? For the um, yeah, I mean, in some cases, we can issue payments outside of the approval cycle. Uh, I mean, obviously not large, larger uh, amounts, but if they're within my budget authority, I can get checks um, you know, outside of the cycle. Mr. Chair, why couldn't we be the more nimble one with our checkbook and not try to lay that at the city's feet? I mean, couldn't we, when, when necessary, write a check and, and then submit for reimbursement if we did that? Or I, I think we could. The problem we've had is we do not have a tax ID number. We're not, a, you know, I, I'm, it's sort of odd to me, but we do not have a separate tax ID number as the DDA. Hmm. I don't even know if we go into the Main Street program, whether or not we'll absorb and adopt some sort of um, tax ID number. So you can't open a bank account without yeah, a tax ID right. number. And that's been our problem. So that's why we have to either work through the city or through some foundation to be able to work accordingly. Yeah, you know, we've handled you as a subset of the city uh, on our books, of course, and, mm -hmm. and we do your banking for you. Um, you've never been set up. You are an authority. Theoretically, you could be set up separately. Um, you know, the question, you know, the, that always comes in is what are the controls? You know, you, you, you know we have controls set up uh, within city government that keeps the funds safe. You know, when funds are being held outside of city government, we get nervous about that a little bit. Understood. Is there a way to like allocate a ten thousand um, dollar? No, we're not. We're never going to be able to really issue checks on our own from through the city. I, I, I just don't see it. I can't figure out. We would not be able to have a checkbook and have the. You guys would fill your audit. <laughs> so. I mean, it seems like there must be precedent set in communities nearby us. We can't be the first DDA to be questioning how to do this. And we see a lot more nimble activity happening, DDAs within our county, but also outside. I mean, there's. I'll, I'll make a couple calls on that to some other groups happens? to see what happens there. But at this point, um, having a tight relationship with the city is wonderful because it doesn't put it on our shoulders. Uh, and we don't have the capacity at this point. I mean, down the road, we may be stronger and able to do it, but as long as the city has the, the fiscal controls on that, I think we're, we're really lucky to have that at this point. Maybe in the future, we'll want to have something else. But right now, I like having uh, a professional overseeing those funds. Well, as you say, uh, uh, there's a lot that goes into it that you don't necessarily see, uh, including the audit which if you had your own separate accounts, you would have to do right. every year. Right. Um, so, you know, in, until you have an administrative structure set up to, to handle it, professional administrative structure set up to handle it, it's, I, I, my recommendation would be keep it with the city. You're here. Greg, how does it work for smaller expenses that are, uh, what is it, $6,000 that city employees have a certain amount of discretion with? How does that work with your reporting and your budgeting well it's just a matter of whether it needs pre-approval uh, by the city commission and or um, competitive bids uh, ten thousand is the threshold that you know administratively we can handle up to ten thousand I mean we just evaluate it to see if it's in the budget frankly you know if it's in the budget I think it's proved so you go there wouldn't be any way of setting up some sort of a sub account with uh, an expenditure cap on it for some of these small incidentals like Dara cups, for example, um, and then looping that in with some of your existing auditing if that was just a small budgeted line item for quick expenses. Well, there is a budget line item within the DDA's budget, and I think we, it would include those kinds of items and so any of those things if we were holding those funds could be submitted to the city and we would issue checks or other or po's or whatever was necessary to to accomplish that and then that, that doesn't necessarily line up with the two commission meetings for voucher approval if it's under the ten thousand and they come from us through you can it be issued in a more immediate fashion or well yes. like i say if there is a need for it to be issued urgently we can do that okay. up to the up to the limit they still show up on the vouchers right. but in some cases those checks for po's may have been issued all right 
when I first uh, purchased the Dara Cups, I purchased them with my credit card. Right. And, um, and I got the information to you and submitted to Greg and his team. And they had a check issued to me in two days, which right. was very, you know, which is appreciated. But we were in a rush to get those cups here. So that's why I just pulled the trigger ahead of time. One thing yeah. about doing that is you don't take advantage of the tax exempt status of the city. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tax exempt. So okay. the cups, I mean, it might have been minimal. Oh, I but see. Over yeah. The course you're of, purchasing. You yes. know, yeah. 100,000 mm -hmm. cups, there's some tax implication there. <laughs> yeah. But Michelle had her hand up. I don't, sorry. Yeah. I don't know if you saw her. So I can speak to that a little bit because with first Fridays and our movie nights that we do, you know, we have a lot of, um, we, we're taking in sponsorship money. So we're doing a lot with bringing in sponsorship money and then paying it out. And Nathan and Steve have been really good about, you know, like we have a separate account right now set up just for the dog days, first Friday stuff. So as that comes in, we can track what came in with our sponsors and what's going to go out and where it's going. Same thing with the movie nights. We now have a movie revenue account so we can track what we bring in from our concessions, our sponsors, and they're really good about like for this week, I have to get a check so I can get change for our concession stand. And, you know, I'll have that today so I can go get change. So as long as you keep them in the loop with communication, they're, they're able to, you know, cut checks pretty quickly and set up the accounts you need. They just need to know what, what you need in place, but they're, they're pretty flexible. With that said, could we have um, and connect with uh, Drake? I guess who, who's doing the honors? Brad for our website and that giving button that we have, the donate button. Would we be able to connect that software with that? Yeah. I mean, just coordinate with Nathan Owen and uh, he should be able to hook you up. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Craig. Okay. Thanks. So no further action with the Community Foundation or Visit Lenaway. No action point. with the Community Foundation or Visit Lenaway. But again, I appreciate them. You know, they're, they're ready to help both organizations in a great way. So, but this is a no cost option. Yep. We hear all the other benefits that go along with it. We probably should stay the course. So. Yep. All right. I've received seven uh, applicants at this point in time for the uh, Main Street uh, director position. We left it open-ended um, as the recommendation of this group, just hoping for um, some more and more applicants. Greg can attest to this. It is a very difficult environment to be attracting um, employees at this point in time at the 50 to 60,000 level. Um, but we do have a lot of, you know, we have some interest. There are a couple of locals and there's quite a few other names that have come through. Um, like I said, six or I think we're up to seven um, in total. So again, I don't remember who I appointed to the interview committee, but we're starting the interviews immediately. Um, so anybody want to be a part of that with me, I would really appreciate um, because I've hired, you know, Ashley. <laughs> well done. Well done. I could, use some, <laughs> I could use some help on the interview process. If you don't That's mind. <laughs> no cut, man. I'm teasing. You married yeah. well, too. Married so. I married up, and I got a great assistant. <laughs> you volunteers for that at the last meeting were Elliot, Ryder, Lolly, Orlando, and Heath. Is that all good still, everybody? Yeah. Excellent. Yes. And, and me, Thomas. And Thomas, okay. then. All right. All right, I will get this scheduled. Now I'm turning red. Anyway, I'll get that scheduled. <laughs> I'll get that scheduled with all of you, or Ashley will actually. So look for a doodle poll. All right. All right, the other thing that we need to get done for the, um, for the application is not only do we need the, the support and the financial support that we're talking about, but we need those letters. I've given the examples. I'll send another email follow-up today of any organization that'll just say, I support it. And even if it's 10 bucks or if it's nothing, just to have them sign it. Um, and we also need volunteers to sign a volunteer. I'm part of this Endeavor volunteer uh, support. And as you look around and, and look at what's happening with, with First Friday and to all the other um, activities, when you think about who you know at, at, at the schools and everybody else that's being a part of this, these are all volunteers. We almost forget sometimes that we have a lot of them still. We want more. But we have a lot. So if you're thinking about volunteers that you know where you've um, been doing something and they've been a party, get them to sign that volunteer level, to, that letter too. 
because I'd like to have a stack like this when they go in. Now I've been in touch with Lee um, Young, uh, Lee, I forget her last name for a second. Um, and she's given us, I think it is Young, um, details that we're, it is confirmed July 31st is the deadline. They will, once they, if they select us and say, hey, we want to start um, the process of seeing if we're going to accept you on the select level, they will come visit our community first. And they're going to come and talk to all of us and ask us questions and be at one of these meetings. And some of their people will be here. Um, and they'll look at the community and the whole thing. Then we're going to be asked to come up to Lansing as a group and as many people as we can take up there and do our presentation or our, our road show, if you will. Um, and uh, by that time, I'm hoping we have a, a director hired. If not, they're, they're fine that the fact that we have had support given to us from our city. Um, and that's a big question on there. Is, is, your, is your local government supporting this idea? And if you remember, they approved $35,000 toward this. So that's a big uh, benefit as well. But I'd like to go up there with thirty dollars to $50,000 worth of commitments and a stack of people that say, we want to be a part of this. We want to be a big part of this. And so if you get those letters and you have friends or people and you say, hey, you look like you volunteered for this, sign that. Or even if you could just give us 20 bucks or 10 bucks or anything and sign this, um, we need as many as possible. So another little push here, all under the squeeze for the next two weeks. So, um, but uh, as Lee said, this is the way it always happens. We always get down nitty gritty. We start crunching it in the last month to see. But I, as I've read through that application, everyone, um, we are doing a, a lot of what they want us to do. We're, we're moving along pretty quickly and we have great answers to their questions. So. Um, as you see the application, you'll see what I mean. So, um, Dusty, is the, is that letter basically is saying we support the application to Main Street. That's, that's right. Basically, what it's saying. Right. Okay, we support that. Okay. Yep. Are there and sample letters you could forward? I can, and, and we'll send them all. So, Ashley's to keep track of that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Good Dusty, <morning>. has, <laughs> Dusty, those donations, uh, do they have to be financial or? Uh, say if somebody owns, I don't know, a video production company <laughs> and were to donate a promo video to the DDA as part of this new kickoff, do they count? <clears throat> do they count that as well, or how does they that would? Uh, any kind type work should be should be uh, you know recorded and and and, and submitted to them. Okay. Because to me that is that's money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just given in a different fashion. I think volunteers are just as important to them as financial. So that would technically be volunteer time. That too. So that too. So yeah, we'll get you the example letters and as many as we can get in the next two weeks would be great. <laughs> Did you hear at the beginning of this meeting you said it's being recorded? <laughs> and then okay, then one final little housekeeping item. And I believe all of you have it, but I don't know. Can we pat, is that the sign? Maybe you do or don't. No, nope. uh -huh. you do not have this. I apologize. So American Title Agency, I'll just sort of walk around. Um, it, it takes all the requirements pretty much. Um, it's there, um, so we don't have to worry about the details of signs, placement, all that. We're just about how it looks. It still fits into our vision downtown. So if there's any concerns. There's something. Oh, there you oh, go. She put it up. Excellent. I think I did something. Sorry. Too, now that I think about it. Nope, I didn't hurt myself. All right. So as always, um, they have to be brought to the downtown to look at, oh, I didn't see, I had the other one on the side there too. Building looks a little different color now too. Mm -hmm. And then if you guys see those LED lights that are out on the side of it, that's, uh, that's something. So I do think the building looks a lot better and I appreciate- It does, it's really nice. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll entertain a motion to accept our um, sign approval. So moved. So that was Thomas. Support. support support by Lolly. Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the same. Excellent. All right. Um, that's all I have. So we can move to public comment. 
Anybody from the public that would like to address this body? Staying quiet for a minute. We learn from you guys. Mm -hmm. All right. If there are no public comments, we'll move to other DDA matters or board comments. Any other DDA matters or any board comments? Go ahead. Um, so I, um, we had talked at, a, a, I don't know, I think it was at a first Friday meeting that I had, but um, John is on here actually from On Point Promotion, but he had heard us talking about the fact that after the first Friday, you know, we had a lot of and I had discussed the last Michelle and I, um, one of the ideas was it would be a very low cost for the, um, the business owners and it, and it would be uniform throughout was um, basically it is like a plastic trash can with a big sock over it, but it can be washed. Um, therefore, it cannot, it's not, it's not plastic. I mean, it is plastic, but the, the sock, it's like a big sock that goes over it. Um, it would have the logo, it could have DDA, you know, it would have DDA, um, City of Adrian, you know, all of that. And it would have a big Dara, um, you know, he, he can make those at such a low cost that even with like the lid, the lid would be on it. It can't be removed because once the socks over it, it holds it down and cut, we'd be cutting holes in it. Um, I do believe, and John, you're on here. Um, I do believe the cost um, could have been like in the, like a hundred to $125 range. I do believe from discussing it with John um, that the businesses would need to do for that. The one concern I had with it when John brought it to me was um, the fact that, okay, so it's like a big uh, bin. Is it going to blow away if we get, cause you know, we've had a lot of wind of recent but um, either A, they put a sandbag underneath in the bottom of it, or they put cinder blocks, you know, because the, the nice thing about this is it could have a plastic bag inside of it. They can take the sock off, you know, lift after the event, take that plastic bag out, put a new plastic bag in so that they're not having um, to clean them out constantly and things like that because you'd have that bag and it's a lot easier for that recycling to have those all contained that way and it was a very low cost option from other things he was looking at and it's not permanent so obviously you know it, it can be moved when when needed um as opposed to anything that's like permanently put in there and you know if a business changes or whatnot um it was just an idea he had been researching and thought that was like one of the lower costs and, and nice looking um I don't know. I just throwing that out there from, you know, discussing that with him. And I know that we had looked at, you know, different options for how to make these receptacles be uniform, um, at, at, you know, across the board. And, you know, my one thing to him was I wouldn't want white because it would show all the dirt and stuff. And yeah. he wasn't thinking white at all, yeah. you know, yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, like our, you know, like Royal blue, you know, kind of sticking with the theme, Navy blue, something like that, but in those blues and, having, you know, those out there and then they would all know what those are because you'd see them, you know, in front of every business, but. Yeah. Um, I did, um, Dusty forward me the email in regards to those things and they do look appropriate, especially possibly when we are doing special events, um, passing on that cost might be a challenge to some of those businesses, I think, and we might get some resistance to that. Um, I did have a conversation with Michelle um, afterwards in regards to what this past first Friday and how things looked and things. And um, we started having the conversation of about how we could, there was a one point in time money earmarked for recyclables in downtown Atrium and then recyclable trash cans. And some of the placements of our trash cans within our downtown are not in the appropriate places. Mm -hmm. and so I would like to work with the city and the DDA, if we form another committee <laughs> and try to look at the possibility of bringing recyclable trash cans into our community. And maybe there is some grant funding through the state or through the Main Street program that maybe we can look at trying to partner with the city and trying to bring recyclable, you know, make our community a green community more or less. So I would like to look at that as well moving forward if 
um, the DDA is open to that. I know, you know, going back to those containers, there's responsibilities, taking them out, putting them out. And I know Michelle and her team on First Fridays is thin enough already to manage placements of those um, when we're having these special, those events. And also is those downtown businesses gonna put those trash cans out? Are they gonna store them? Or is the city gonna store them? And those would be some of the logistics that we would need to work out. And so, um, and, and obviously after last first Friday, things looked really great. Thanks to the partnerships of, you know, with the city, you know, their personnel coming in on a Saturday morning and picking up garbages and things of that nature as well. So I, you know, I'm open to those ideas. Um, I think the trash cans were neat, but I'd rather see something more sustainable for us moving forward. So if we put in these recyclable trash cans, that's anything that's recyclable go into those. Right? Mm -hmm. But I think we can still work with the branding effort with the city of Adrian and the Dara district and the downtown develop it, you know, the DDA and things of that nature, we can still work on some branding efforts mm -hmm. and see if there's any money out there that we can get funding for it as well. Mm -hmm. So, so that would still encompass the whole dark cup thing. It'd just be more than just the dark cups would be all recyclables then. Yes. And then it would be a city effort to empty those the same as the rest of the trash. We might be able to get some grant funding in to cover mm -hmm. that cost. Yeah. Cause okay. I think there's some placement issues now and i just say now because we've created the district you know so i think you know when you get to the edge of mommy or our church in south maine there's nothing down over there you know in that corner you know on the other side of the ymca building it's about you know 30 40 feet up more closer to get growing but maybe it needs to be down more towards the corner i don't know i'm i'm not a trash placement experts you know oh, but i bet you are <laughs> <laughs> well and one concern i've had about i know that you know that was part of the the dara stipulation you know they need to have a receptacle out there mm -hmm. you know but the thing the thing that i've noticed is from the past you know few first fridays even just i was out and about saturday night and walking downtown is that people, they're not gonna stay in front of that establishment. It's very rare that they do. They're going to walk around. And so I'm thinking, especially now that you just said that, thinking ahead to Comstock Christmas tree walk, when, when that starts to hit or any event down that way, there, there isn't anything because what, by saying that it has to be in front of that establishment, that doesn't help then because you've walked away from that. Exactly. And I think that's why at the first, the very first first Friday, well, in June, when we, it was the one of the big ones, yeah. I, it wasn't the first one, but at that one is where we really noticed the cup issue. But honestly, where I was picking up the cups wasn't in front of one of those establishments. I mean, no. it was near Chalmers, but it wasn't right there. And so I do think that could be a problem. I see what you're saying that indeed they need to be more spread out throughout that whole Dara district and that area, because, you know, in general, just, but especially for those Dara cups, because people are walking, that's yes. exactly what they're doing, which was the whole intent of the Dara district to get them walking around. Mm -hmm. But if it is sitting in front, they're going to have to walk back unless, you know, they're going back for another drink, but they'd always have to walk back to those establishments. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's where our challenge is. Once you start walking, say I'm going to the pizza bucket, to get some mm. food and it's like well there's no trash cans down there and so if i'm a vagrant i'm just going to throw it over there but if i'm a respectable citizen i would find a trash receptacle you know so it's just where did it, you throw yours last time yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i think you know we just maybe I, I try to figure out a way where we can find better placements of the receptacles that we have and obviously like you said if we're placing those out there and we got to get a sandbag and a brick and, you know, it's kind of labor intensive, but we we can figure out a way to put permanent structures up that are, you know, secured to the ground or heavy enough where they won't blow away. And it makes our community look, our downtown cleaner. And obviously it shows us that we're a green community as well. Yeah. I think those are the steps that we need to kind of look at moving forward. 
I think as well, we should look at a budget next year. Uh, yes. Fairly significant dollars in support of this so that, you know, we can't lay this at the feet of the city. Agreed. Um, you know, Agreed. We're the one it's got to be that this. partnership. Yeah. yeah. You got it. Dave, the beautification branding committee would be happy to work with you on that. Nice. John, thank you for your work on that as well. I, I think the branding opportunity for that is even on maybe even our own trash cans. I really like the look of them. Um, I can just see our DDA logo, the DARA logo, City of Adrian's logo, all of us, you know, uh, um, utilizing that to have some branding opportunities as well. But thank you for your work on that. And if you guys will just sort of come together and see what we can figure out. Any other comments from the board? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um we have a new uh, community development director, Angeline Lawrence, and uh, we really want to be sure that we're welcoming her into our community and getting to know her. So uh, in that regard, we're having a, a casual meet and greet uh, this Thursday from four to five at the Adrian Armory Bravo Room. Please stop by on your way to and from, say hi. Um, you know, as we bring in people to help our community we really need to reach out to be sure that we're building relationships with uh, her so that she's comfortable in moving ahead and feeling like she's a part of our community. So please encourage anyone else to come by and say hi, shake a hand uh, and welcome her to Adrian and help her get uh, comfortable with uh, the faces and the names. It's always difficult to do that. It's an important part of her job to get to know us and us to get to know her. So please try to do that if you can. And this she, she goes by Angie, by the way. You know, she can't be too bad. Just kidding. Too many Angies in this. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Chair, also, I just wanted to thank Michelle and the city, the mayor, the management of the city uh, in terms of our partnerships that we're really, I'm just amazed and, and thrilled at how over the years, in the previous few years, how much we're working together and what a great experience it is compared to the decades before that where we somehow could not figure out how to get on the same page. So this last um, first Friday, we had Jay Marks uh, and his crew double the size of the uh, market group. And, and we're continuing to develop that. And just Michelle, I wanted to really thank you for your leadership in that regard and the support from the city to make that happen. We're really moving in, in, in some, some great positive directions and it takes everybody to do that. And I just can't say how thrilled I am to see our city coming together in partnership. It's just great. Thank you. Any other board comments? Thank you all for your volunteerism and your commitment to the DDA. I can't tell you how much um, I'm proud to be a part of this group and um, continue to uh, move forward. And thank you for your help. I'll be following up with some emails as it relates to Main Street. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. There's been Lolly, then Thomas. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you.